Welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, sticking around in the, for the uh, mayoral forum. I'd like to introduce this year's two candidates for uh, City of Lyle's mayors. First, the incumbent, Mayor Osby Davis. And council member, Joanne Shively. In this portion, each question, each candidate is going to have an opening statement for a minute and a half. The questions, there will be a minimum of 10 questions asked. The, um, the order drawn was by a coin toss. Did you, who won? Who, I didn't see who won. Did you win the coin toss? Who won the coin toss? I think Joanne. Joanne, Joanne okay. Um, the questions, the, each of these questions were, uh, the candidates did not see, hear the questions in the, pro, in the last uh, forum. Again, Rudy Manfredi will be doing the timekeeping. Each question, the opening statements can be for a minute and a half. Each question asked will be for a two minute response and the rebuttal will be for one minute and then each candidate will get a three minute closing. So with that, Ms. Shively, your opening statement. Did you win? I thought you said. I thought they said the lowest number, I don't, I don't know what. I, I, I had the lowest number, she had the highest number. So what does that mean? I, Ask Rich. <laughs> Rich, who, who, won the, who won the coin toss? Mayor Davis. Okay, so I so, start. So you start with your opening statement. Good, thank you. I've had the, the privilege and the honor, in, including the challenge, to lead our city during the most difficult and challenging times in our history. We pulled together at a time of crisis, and we have been successful in building a budget deficit, I mean, changing a budget deficit to a budget reserve. We reduced our pension and medical costs and established a policy where we live within our means. We've had, a, had the courage to make the tough decisions and no matter what anyone says to the extent that we have control over our finances at this time, our financial house is in order. This is exemplified by the bankruptcy court's approval of our plan of adjustment and our pending exit from bankruptcy in the next couple of weeks. We have made changes to how we do business and there are many changes to still come. Those that staff have implemented of the 297 recommended changes that were presented to our council by the manager and unanimously approved by the council itself. We've come a long way, and yes, there's still a long way to go. But I'm encouraged and excited about our future. It's a safe, successful, and prosperous future. I'm asking for your support in my election bid in order to um, rebuild our city and move us forward. Let us come together and rebuild our city the way that we think it ought to be. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you. Councilmember Scheidel. Well, first, I want to make sure everyone can hear me out there in the back. Great, thank you. Um, thank you all for coming tonight and thank the sponsors of this event. I'm Joanne Scheidel. I was born, raised, and educated right here in Vallejo. I'm a retired bank executive and worked here most of my career. I'm an expert in all forms of lending and a specialist in deposits and investments. I also have experience in management, administration, human relations, and customer relations. Also been co-owner of a successful local business. Thanks to you, I have been on the city council for three terms, although I have been in the voting minority 95% of that time. Recently, I recovered $2.7 million in general fund loans, which facilitated our early exit from bankruptcy. In previous terms, I recovered over $9.5 million of marine world debt. Thanks to my banking experience, that was possible. And I'm very proud that I was able to do that for our city. I've also been responsible for charter changes, such as a structurally balanced budget, general fund reserve policy, and a five-year financial plan. I also chaired the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee. I'm running for mayor because our city literally cannot afford four more years of business as usual. Thank you. First,
First question from Mayor Davis. Factually, in Solano County, and more importantly, Vallejo, commercial property is experiencing a greater devaluation than other Bay Area communities. What would you do to stimulate business and recruit new, recruit new business to our city? Well, first of all, we can't recruit any businesses to our city until we uh, fix some of the problems that we have. For example, um, without fixing our public safety problem, we can't recruit new businesses. Without fixing our schools, we can't recruit new businesses. And so, as far as I'm concerned, we can help to retain new businesses, and we can do that by involving the new businesses or the existing businesses in our government. For example, I created a uh, mayor's business committee that meets with me and talks about the needs of the business community and recommends, recommends things to occur in order to make their job, uh, their business, a lot more profitable. As far as the public safety issue, uh, I think you know, and I, I imagine it's going to come up sometime, Measure B is on the ballot. I believe that, that Measure B is a way to hire additional police officers, uh, to um, open fire stations, to fix our streets and roads, and to um, invest in economic development. I think it's absolutely critical that we have a jump start to our economy and help ourselves by uh, passing Measure B, and, and in doing so, we can then add police officers. And I think we're well on our way at that point to uh, attracting new businesses. But I also believe that we have to be assertive in our efforts to bring new businesses to our community. We can't sit back and wait for someone to come to us. We need to go out, and I have been doing that in my term of office. I've reached out to several businesses to uh, get them to locate here in Vallejo. I'm still talking to various businesses, trying to encourage them here in our city even now. Thank you. Council Member Shively. I was fortunate to be on the council in 1998 that brought Turo University to Mare Island. We now have 85 businesses <laughs> and 2,000 jobs here. In 2009, we brought Alstom. 2010, Allied Defense Recycling. 2011, TNO Railroad. And right now, we're in the process of bringing Blue Homes. I've also been fortunate to help Vallejo by helping bring the Kaiser Call Center, which brought 750 jobs. And recently, I sent a letter to the new CEO of Apple Computers, Ted Cook, because they're building a new complex in Cupertino that they already expect to overflow before it's even finished, asking him to respond because I'd love to see that come to here. Come Thank to you. Blue. Council Member Shively, this question. What is your plan for development of Mare Island as a whole, and more particularly, the north end of the island? What would you do to retain the current businesses and attract new businesses to Mare Island? In 2002, we had the first early transfer ever in the whole United States, right here on Mare Island. After that, it was sort of like the city went off and left Lennar on their own. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. When you are dealing with governmental entities like the Navy, the Department of Defense, state entities, you have to have a government entity leading the way. That's what we did prior to 2002. So we need to go back to working more closely with Lennar, leading the way when contacts are necessary with governmental agencies. We need to reestablish key relationships with state and federal decision makers and regulators. And we work, need to work with the Navy to secure additional funding and provide a scheduling commitment. We need to reestablish the Mare Island Conversion Division. Lennar will fund it. For the north end of, of the island, there are geotechnical problems. Anything built there will have to be built on pilings. That's very expensive, will require a large developer, not necessarily a single large development but it's got to be someone with deep pockets. Over the years, there have been 
two or three developers that have been there and they tied up the land for years and did nothing. Recently we had a bid from Mare Island Studios and they were given a very short time to accomplish something which was not truly reasonable. Thank you. Mayor Davis. Would you read the question again, please? Sure. <clears throat> what is your plan for the development of Mare Island as a whole, and more particularly, the north end of the island? What would you do to retain current businesses and attract new businesses to Mare Island? Well, first of all, in terms of the island as a whole, we have to recognize that the city of Vallejo owns the north end and Lennar owns the south end. Somehow we need to put that together. So uh, we're not going to be able to do the entire island unless we pull the two pieces together. I would go out and seek someone who has a desire to develop, and I have been out seeking someone who has a desire to develop the entire island as a green tech island from the north end to the south end. Um, they are looking at it uh, now and uh, we should know something in the coming future. Um, I, I also believe that as far as ADR is concerned, I've gone out and, and I think this is what we have to do and I think this is what a mayor needs to do. I've actively gone out and not just talked about helping ADR, but I've actively sought ADR's permitting with the various regulatory agencies, whether it was BCDC, whether it was the Navy. I've actually gone back to uh, Washington, D.C. on my own dime, spoke to um, the se Undersecretary of the Navy regarding the cleanup of Mare Island. To Thank you. Next question, Mayor Davis. How do you plan to improve communications and work with the City of Vallejo, I'm sorry, the Vallejo City Unified School District? Please be specific. Well, I have, I have already um, worked with the Lell Unified School District by working with the last three superintendents of schools. I have regular meetings with each of them. I attend the schools. I speak to students in the various schools. I have invited, and it did occur, in fact, the superintendent of schools came to speak to our council and gave us an update on what was going on. I've attended the welcome back to school with the uh, uh, school district in the beginning of this school year. So I've done everything I can to use my office to influence um, whatever decisions they needed to make in order to improve our schools. And I've actively, actively opened the, the lines of communication between myself, the school district, and the board of trustees for the school district. Um, I think that that's what we can do and that's what we have to do. Thank you. Councilmember Shively. Well, Vallejo's recovery is also very dependent on the schools recovery. We need to find a way to work with the school district without usurping the board's authority or supplanting them. The city has a group called the Interagency Committee, which meets with school district, Greater Vallejo Recreation District, sanitation and flood control, the library, and is considering adding the county to that list. Unfortunately, until recently, it rarely met. And prior to that, it was only a discussion group. There's a lot that can be accomplished if you have three entities working together. For instance, you can, waste, you can eliminate waste and duplication. If you have three properties right next to each other owned by any of these entities, it makes much better sense to send out one truck with one lawnmower and one person behind the lawnmower than it does to send out three. Thank you. I thought you said there was going to be some rebuttal. There's no rebuttal in any The of question was for you. She rebutted it for a minute and a half, and then oh, we go to the next one. that's how you do it. Okay. The next question, Councilmember Shively. What is your position on Measure B, the 1% sales tax increase on the November ballot? If it passes, how will you ensure the money is spent more efficiently and most effectively? Well, um, Measure B is a proposed sales tax increase that is not one cent. It is one per cent. Big difference. I absolutely oppose this measure, but I voted to put it on the ballot because I feel the citizens of Vallejo deserve the opportunity to vote on it. 
They're the ones that will be paying the bills if it passes. If it passes, Vallejo will have higher sales taxes than American Canyon, Napa, and all of Solano County. This will put our existing businesses at a disadvantage and discourage new business. While the city was in bankruptcy, the council majority had the opportunity to reduce expenses and get sustainable contracts. They did not. Now, that same majority is supporting this 1% sales tax increase in November to pay for the raises that they voted during bankruptcy. If approved, the money will go into the general fund to be spent any way future councils wish. How can a council tell employees that we can't afford raises if there's $9.8 million of new revenue available? For years, Vallejo has balanced its budget by reducing staff and slashing essential services. We have to stop that and start reducing the cost of providing those services. We can do that. We can save $5.8 million a year if we staff and pay our police and fire the same as Vacaville. Increasing Vallejo sales tax now is a bad idea. It's time to make the tough decisions, reduce employee costs, and quit kicking the can down the road. Thank you. Mayor, De excuse me, Mayor Davis, we have reduced costs. We have reduced pension costs. We've reduced medical costs. We've come out of bankruptcy with a balanced budget, and the bankruptcy judge has said that we're uh, financially sound, at least in terms of approving the plan. I support Measure B, and I support Measure B because it is a way for us to jumpstart and help ourselves, our own city, and to rebuild. We have stopped the bleeding that we had when I came into office in 2007. We had a budget deficit. We now have a budget reserve. I think it's time for us to rebuild our city. It's time for us to put back the police officers. We say that we want public safety, but we're not putting any money there to ensure public safety. We say we want our roads fixed, but we don't have any money to fix our roads. We need to um, pass Measure B in order to generate some monies for that. We talk about opening our fire stations. We don't have any money for our fire stations to reopen them as a MAC. Thank you. Mayor Davis, if it is entirely up to you, how would you solve the public safety funding issues in Vallejo and rectify the issue that the public at large does not feel safe here in Vallejo? Please be specific. Read that again. If it was entirely up to you, how would you solve the public safety funding issues in Vallejo and rectify the issues that the public at large does not feel safe here in Vallejo? Please be specific. Well, public safety funding issues. Um, if, you, if you mean that the, the cost that we have in our public safety um, is too high, then I think that the, the response to that, if that's the question, because I'm not certain what that means, if that's the question, then um, my response is that we have an obligation to reduce the cost of doing business. Um, our structural defect, I mean deficit, was as a result of the cost expenses exceeded our revenues. And so with our recent contracts with our IAFF, we reduced that cost. We took back, they gave back monies for medical, pension, we have a two-tiered pension system. Um, we have uh, them paying for part of their medical as well as retiree medical. Those are the kinds of things that we have to implement in order to control um, public safety funding. We have to make sure that the expenditures do not exceed our revenues. That's the only way we're going to do that. And without that, we're going to continue to keep uh, doing the same thing. Uh, I don't call that... Um, controlling our funding costs. I think that's realistic about how we take care of business in our city. Thank you. Council Member Shively. Well, we can improve public safety, restore city services, and still live within our means without new taxes. As I mentioned earlier, if we structured our police and fire more like Vacaville, 
we would have more police and fire. Vacaville has 36 more police personnel, not all sworn officers, it's about half and half sworn and non-sworn, but they pay $4 million less with 36 more people. Their fire, they have three more firefighters and they pay $1.8 million less. So we could save $5.8 million. That would go a long way towards improving our public safety, our streets, rebuilding our city, promoting economic development, and all the things that we want to do. We also need to reduce expenses by restructuring city government. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Shiley, what is your position on the influx of medical marijuana dispensaries in Vallejo? How do you, would you regulate them, and should they be taxed? Well, they're here, whether we like it or not, and we have to do something to control the proliferation of them, especially in our downtown. Medical marijuana is very beneficial for severely ill patients, especially cancer patients going through radiation and chemotherapy. So, I'm not totally averse to them, but we should have a very limited number, and they should be geographically separated very widely, so they would be accessible to the people who need them. They certainly should not all be concentrated in one area. When this was first brought to the council, I asked for a moratorium, and I was outvoted. Hopefully, that is going to be brought back, and there will be a moratorium passed, so that we can stop any more opening until we create ordinances to regulate and tax them. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Davis. I am against the medical marijuana um, proliferation in our city. They're all illegal. Every single one that's open right now is opened illegally. It is my belief that we need to go about uh, using the resources we have to close them. And if we're going to establish regulations, let's go ahead and establish the regulations and then decide the zoning issue. And then we um, look at whether or not we're going to tax them. I think we put the cart before the horse. Um, we are talking about taxing an illegal operation. What happened to our responsibility to close down illegal businesses in our community? That's what we should be putting our resources in. A moratorium is not going to do it. One of the reasons we haven't closed them down is they say we don't have the resources to do so. Well, if we don't have the resources to close them down, then how do we have the resources to impose a moratorium if someone tries to open up? And how do we close them down? We don't have the resources. In my opinion, we put the resources together right now to close them all down, and then we start. If we need them, we'll start afterwards. Thank you. Mayor Davis, the current Callahan de Silva waterfront plan to develop the open space is still in the planning stages. What is your position on this plan? How and when would you get this plan to move forward? Well, the waterfront plan is, um, has been approved a long time ago. And at this point in time, uh, they have redirected the emphasis from um, what we call Parcel A, which is at the end of Tennessee Street, to downtown on Georgia Street, Maryland Way, and Main Street in Santa Clara. Um, the underground parking garage is being constructed, and once that's finished, that's the first phase. The second phase will come in. Then we'll be able to clear off the, um, uh, that parcel, move the post office to a proper location and develop that. I see us as using that as a means of developing a um, ferry uh, building that parallels what they have in San Francisco so that when people come here, there's places to go and things to do. I see great opportunities for us at the waterfront. And I think that the problem is, is that we can't get that built until we, in fact, get the post office moved and we're moving forward with that. So I would continue to do what I've done in the past, which is assist our staff in trying to find funds to build a parking garage. I 
assisted staff and went to Washington, D.C., as well as went to the state of Washington to obtain grants for the parking garage in order to facilitate that development. I would continue to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Shively. Well, Callahan de Silva has had uh, complete control of the waterfront for a number of years. And well, have you seen anything growing down there? Because I haven't. And they have never been held to any performance standards. Lennar is criticized constantly for the same thing. Triad was criticized. And they're not here anymore. But Callahan de Silva is still holding on to control of the waterfront. Their original idea was to develop parcel A into housing, just the same as the other two developers that I named. They said they needed that to get the parking garage going. Um, OK. If we don't get something working on the waterfront very shortly, we aren't going to get it for a much longer period of time. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Shively, if it was entirely up to you, which would you choose for Vallejo? A strong mayor or city manager form of governance? How would you implement this task? I'm sorry, what was the last part of that? How would you implement this task? How would I implement this task? Well, in order to change the form of government that the city of Vallejo has, requires a charter change. So it won't be exactly my decision. And, um, the reason I do not support a strong mayor form of government is that you're asking someone who has very little expertise in all of the areas that the city looks at, such as finance, economic development, human resources, all of those department heads, you're asking someone who has no expertise in that to take over control of a $225 million a year corporation. That's not fair to that person. It's not fair to the city. When Oakland went into the strong mayor form of government, they did not get rid of their city manager. They just changed the title, and it cost the same salary. Additionally, the personnel in the mayor's office went from four to 27. That is not a savings, and is certainly not an expense that the city of Vallejo could afford. So although we may not all be tickled pink with the council manager form of government, I think it is the best for the city especially one this size. If you look at other cities that have the strong mayor form of government, they're very, very large. Oakland, San Jose, Fresno, San Diego. They're not medium-sized cities like Vallejo is. Thank you. <laughs> mayor Davis. Um, <clears throat> I'm in favor of a different form of government than what we have. Um, people call it strong mayor, they call it strong city manager, but I'm in favor of a, a form of government that says that the mayor is not saddled with all of the responsibility and no authority to bring it about. And for a form of government that says that you hire a city administrator to deal with the people that you have on your staff. For example, you have a finance director, you have a police chief, you have a fire chief. You can have a city administrator who in fact has the experience and knowledge that oversees uh, those persons. I think we have to get beyond the point to where everybody comes to the mayor's office to complain, but if the mayor were to call one of the staff members to ask about the complaint, they're in violation of the charter and they could be uh, criminally charged for having done that. We need to change that kind of government. Now, what that actually looks like, whether you call it a strong form of government or a participa participatory form of government, we have to change and give the mayor some authority. Thank you. <laughs> mayor Davis, as an elected official in the city of Vallejo, what will you do to keep families from leaving our community? How will you accomplish this task? 
I think one of the things that we have to do to keep families from moving is improve our schools. And so in order to accomplish that task, um, I would continue to do what I've been doing, working with our school district, seeing how I can use City Hall and the mayor's office and uh, to assist them in accomplishing their goal of improving our schools so that they become number one. I think another problem that we have is, in, is public safety. Again, public safety is the number one issue that people talk to me about. They want more police on the street. They want to feel safer in the community. We have a $65 million budget and every penny of it is spent. As a matter of fact, we have projected labor um, expectations in the years to come uh, for our next three years of our, next four years of our budget. So we have no additional monies. If we're going to do something, I'll say it again, with our police, we're going to have to come up with some monies to do so. The $5.8 million that was talked about before, um, I have some real questions about whether that's even $5.8 million. We need to do a side-by-side -side comparison with what Vacaville has and what Vallejo has to determine if there's really that difference. We're hearing numbers, but we don't have any facts to support those numbers. And I submit to you that there's not that big of a number that you think about. And if you're concerned about future councils having control over the monies in Measure B, you have to be concerned about future councils making the same kind of decision with respect to um, the labor contracts as well you're still going to rely on the people that you elect to do the job that you expect them to do. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Shiley. Could you repeat the question, sure. please? As an elected official in the city of Vallejo, what would you do to keep families from leaving our community? How will you accomplish this task? Well, I think schools are the biggest reason that we have lost residents. And other cities with good schools have not suffered as much in this recession. Good schools produce a well-educated labor force which attracts businesses, reduces unemployment, and for people who want to buy houses here, it improves property values. One of the things that we need to promote to get to have in Vallejo are trade schools. It's a concept that has not been used for a number of years. Not everyone wants to go to college. Not everyone wants to be a computer programmer. And when you need a plumber, you won't get too far with a computer programmer. Our public safety is another major factor. And the $5.8 million figure is very, very accurate. Thank you. Councilmember Shively, there's been a public outcry and concerns about public employees' unfunded pension liabilities and health care benefits. What solution would you suggest to meet these obligations? Would you repeat the last half? You're a little far away from the mic. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. There has been a public outcry and concerns about public employees' unfunded pension liabilities and health care benefits. What solution would you suggest to meet these obligations? Well, the public certainly deserves to have um, an outcry about just what you're talking about. This is two pages produced by Public Employees Retirement System, otherwise known as PERS, and it lists, just from the city of Vallejo, retirees who make more than $100,000 a year in retirement. Plus, they get free health care. We cannot continue to sustain that. We truly do need pension reform. There are a variety of ways that it can happen. Um, you can require people to work longer. You can require them to pay more into their pension. Or we could get away from the type of pension that we have. We have what is called a defined benefit, which means that Retirees are guaranteed a certain amount every month, regardless of how well PERS does. When PERS went in the tank a year or so ago, it didn't affect the retirees, but it certainly affected the city budget because the city had to come up with more money. As long as that continues to happen, it's going to cost us more money. What we have is people playing the stock market with our money. 
PERS has about 80% of its investment in stock. That is not a really good formula for safety. We have employees, both retired and active, who have 100% health care, not only for themselves, but their entire families. When they retire, they have that for all the rest of their lives. How many of you have that? I don't. That's the type of changes that we need to look at. There's a whole list of changes that can be made for pensions. Thank didn't, you. Didn't bring them with me tonight. <clears throat> Mayor Davis. One of the things that we have to understand is that PERS has some restrictions that uh, kind of ties the hands of the agency um, that administers it. So there are certain things that we can't do because of PERS. For example, we implemented with the fire contracts a two-tiered system, a retirement system for new employees. And what that meant was the new employees didn't come in with 3% at 50 as the old employees did. They came in with 2% at 60. We couldn't change that formula for the existing firefighters, so what we did is we did a formula that says that we will keep the 3% at 50 because we have to because it's PERS, but the firefighters paid the difference between 3% at 50 and 2% at 60, so they picked up that cost. We have to implement that in the contracts that comes up because we are, we are bound by those PERS contracts. So we have to change that. We have an existing um, uh, employees who pay um, for their, we pay their medical. We have to change that around and require them to pay some of their own medical. Thank you. Mayor Davis, what is your position on the Solano 360 project at the fairgrounds and or what would you suggest as an alternative to the 360 project? Well, I don't suggest an alternative to the 360 project at this point. I think the 360 project is an excellent project. I don't know if you've been following it, but it, it, it has a plan for an iconic uh, um, development there that would bring people from all over the region and all over the area. It's situated right on Interstate 80. We have 155,000 people pass through this city every day. It would be an excellent opportunity for us to have people stop and leave something more than just smog, leave some money in our city as they pass through. And so I'm all for 360. Um, I um, started the discussion of 360 and the possibility of that with former supervisor um, John Silva and current supervisor Jim Sparing. It was just a concept that we came up with and we discussed it until it became a reality. And now we're well on the way with our 360. We had our project design uh, review yesterday at our meeting, our 360 meeting. We have another meeting on November the 17th. There's a public meeting on September the 22nd about our 360. I think you should see it. It's exciting. It would bring a lot of business and new development to our community. Um, so I'm all for it. I'm pushing it. It's a way in which we can help ourselves also with economic development. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Shively. I have not been as privy to the details on Project 360 since I'm not part of that committee. However, what I have read on it um, sounds very promising. My biggest concern is that we are supporting a project right now that may not have enough flexibility in it to accommodate the changes that will occur before the project is built. That means we should not be looking at that plan right now with the idea that we aren't going to build it for 10 years. In 10 years, we may need something entirely different. Um, the property that is the Solano County Fairgrounds has been very difficult to develop because pretty much right in the middle of it, there's 17 acres that is dedicated to recreation, which is primarily used for the fair. And it's very hard to build around that and create something meaningful. I am hoping that this will go through. I hate to see that prime freeway property sitting there. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Shively, in your opinion, 
Do you believe Vallejo has a disproportionate amount of affordable housing and parolees compared to other Bay Area cities? And if it was entirely up to you, what would you do to make sure Vallejo is treated fairly? Answer to the first part of that, yes, I do. I think we have more than our share of affordable housing. And I don't think we can afford the affordable housing that we have because of the drain it places on our resources. If you look at the calls for service for the, from the uh, police department, it's overwhelming for much of the affordable housing. I think it's very unfair and inappropriate that ABAG decided to give Napa a waiver on their requirement for affordable housing. And then we'll spread that requirement out to all the other cities like us. I recently voted no on the Sonoma Apartments because I did not want to continue affordable housing in that project for 55 years. They had almost reached the end of their affordability covenant. There were three requirements that they had to reach before um, that covenant expired. They had reached two of them. They had still a few Section 8 housers, housing renters, get the right word out. And that was all that was left. There were about 36, if I remember right. Under the, the new financing, that requirement is now double, and the covenant will be in place for 55 years. Everybody de needs and deserves a decent place to live, but they can't all live in Vallejo. Thank you. Mayor Davis? I'm not certain whether we have a disproportionate amount of affordable housing. I think that we need to define the difference between affordable housing and low-income housing. There is a difference. Affordable housing is housing where you have people who come in to their first job and they have a, a, a low income and you find a way that they can buy a home. That's affordable housing. Low-income housing is something else that has a totally different um, criteria for low-income housing. I think the biggest thing that we need to do is make sure that landlords become responsible for their housing. They become responsible for the tenants that they have as well. That's what we need to crack down on. Council Member um, um, Hannigan came up with a, uh, an ordinance that we haven't been able to pass yet that would do some of that. But I think that's what we need to do, make people accountable. And, and regarding the affordable housing in at, at, at South Vallejo, even if we had voted no on that, that new contract for them, we were told, and the facts were, that that affordable housing would have continued on and on and on and on. It was not going to expire. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor Davis, what would you as an elected official do to help satisfy concerns of the citizens of Vallejo about the increase in crime in Vallejo and how? Well, I think this is the, I'm, I'm getting repetitive. One of the ways we're going to deal with the increasing crime is, is we have to do a holistic approach. I don't think that you solve crime by just adding police officers, although they're absolutely necessary. I think it's a community problem, it's a community solution. I think I would continue to encourage what's been going on recently. Fighting back has, has worked tirelessly in establishing um, um, community organizations, neighborhood watch groups. I think that's absolutely necessary. I think in the community that I live in, they have an excellent neighborhood watch, and it indicates that we are the eyes and the ears of the police, and therefore we help. I think that that has to ha happen. We have to have a buy-in of our community citizens in order to make our city safe. It's not going to happen by just police officers. It's going to take all of our efforts. And I would continue to do the things that I have been doing, such as um, reaching out and looking for other ways to generate um, safety in our community, like advocating for the cameras that we have now, 20 cameras that we're, we're um, we're purchasing to place in various cities and also place them in police vehicles so that they can work smarter. I think that's one of the ways we do it. We get the inv involvement of our community as well. And I've also gone out and sought a grant from Kaiser Permanente Hospital where we're able to hire three new police officers. And they are going into the crime suppression unit to deal with quality of life crimes like drugs and prostitution and so on. Those are the kind of things that I've done and those are the kind of things that we need to do. Thank you. 
Council Member Shively? Could you repeat it, please? Sure. What would you, as an elected official, do to help satisfy concerns of the citizens of Vallejo about the increase in crime in Vallejo and how? Well, first, I want to thank some people who are out here in the audience for helping to do that, who helped establish the 200 neighborhood watch groups that we have now, where we previously only had about 20. That is the type of citizen participation that it's going to take to get this under control in Vallejo. If each one of us that's here had one police officer assigned to us personally, still wouldn't be enough. They would have to be with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. So we have to do this ourselves. And many of our citizens have already started that. So thank you. Thank you for caring. It's kind of like JFK said, ask not what your city can do for you. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing. Ask what you can do for your city. And our citizens are doing that. Yes, we do need more police officers. Yes, we can have more police officers, but not at the cost that we're paying for our present police officers. Thank you. This will, next question will be the last question. This will also, you each get three minutes on this. And this is your closing. Council Member Shively, you'll start. What leadership qualities do you possess to create a cohesive city council working together for the good of all of Vallejo? Well, I don't think we're totally uncohesive. What you see are a lot of votes where they're not unanimous. And there's nothing wrong with that. If they were all 7-0 votes, you'd only need one person up there. With seven people, you get a disparity of philosophies and a disparity of thought processes. And that's good. That's healthy. So um, years ago, when we had a lot of 7-0 votes, there were constant references in the community to the seven dwarfs being sitting up there. Um, so I don't think that's the right way to go either. Um, I exhibited some out-of-the-box, thinking out-of-the-box leadership recently with the IBEW contract by giving that group the opportunity to solve their own financial problem. Never been done before. And they did it. And I thank them for it. It shows the start of teamwork. I would like to offer that opportunity to all of the other city employees when their contracts expire, most of them next year. As your mayor, I will focus on restructuring city government, developing a plan for long-term financial stability, partnering with other agencies to eliminate waste and duplication, make government more transparent and business customer friendly, fixing our streets with some of that 5.8 million we could save, improving Vallejo's image and promoting inclusiveness. I will use every opportunity to promote Vallejo's image and unify our city. I will represent everyone equally without bias or prejudice. My special interest group is the citizens of Vallejo, all of its citizens. To encourage your input, I've had more town hall meetings and created more citizen advisory groups than any incumbent or candidate. I've listened to you, and I will continue to listen. I'm here for you, and I will have an open door policy. Guiding Vallejo to the future that we all want requires a full-time, don't confuse that with strong, mayor. Being retired, I can make that commitment of time and energy. Thank you. Mayor Davis. I think uh, a leader needs to be decisive, patient, persuasive, needs to be a consensus builder, needs to lead by example, needs to be inclusive of everybody on the team to make sure that you get the best decision that you can. I think they need to be selfless. I think they need to be a doer. Um, under my leadership, we've turned a budget deficit into a budget reserve. 
We've moved from acrimony between council members to working together for the good of Vallejo. I'm encouraged by the progress and excited about our future, because we have a great future. We've made a positive economic strides and even the down economy. We must have a selfless, no limits philosophy if we're to succeed. I've had, had, I have had such a philosophy. For example, I did not sit back with a woe is me attitude when I took my seat in 2007 with two members of council voting against me taking my seat. Instead, I reached out across the aisle and I asked for reconciliation. And I reached out again and again until we developed a relationship of trust and a consensus. When we cut all the monies out of the line item for JVRD and for our senior citizens and for our library, I didn't sit back and complain. I got busy in calling people, pulling people together to raise money, put on an annual golf tournament, and in the last two years raised over $84,000 contributed directly to GVRD, our senior citizens, library, and fighting back as well as a couple of other organizations. I pulled together people to uh, develop Soul Trans, Solano Transit Authority. When we were looking at a deficit in our a transit budget and we were both competing for the same dollars, the transit dollars between Benicia and Vallejo, we pulled together a coalition that formed Soul Trans. Um, collaborating together to save the public money and to provide services. The interagency committee, I pulled that back together and we're now actively working to solve the problems of duplication of efforts. When the problem of prostitution came to our city, I called together uh, Council Member Gomes and we put together a prostitution task force. Because of the loss of revenues and 47 percent and loss in um, police officers, I didn't sit back and complain. I got busy and started looking for monies elsewhere and other ways to do it. And I've talked before about Kaiser Permanente and the monies that, that they are putting together in a um, grant so that we can hire three police officers. Um, I'm not just talked about creating jobs. I got involved with ADR in the permitting process so that we could, in fact, create jobs on, on, on Mare Island. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. What I'm trying to say to you is that it's very clear that I'm a doer, not a talker. Thank you. I'd like to thank both of you guys for coming out tonight and participating in this. I think the public at large really appreciates it. I'd like to thank all of you, the citizens of Leo, for coming out and showing your interest. It's very much appreciated. I'd like to thank Toro University. OzCat Radio, and the sponsors of Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, and the Vallejo Businesses Alliance, and the Solano Association of Realtors. Thank you very much.